Sup, Chooms? How y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. So, anyone who is suffering from hair loss and then goes to a doctor for treatment will be told that the two pharmaceutical options for hair loss, minoxidil and finasteride, have to be used indefinitely. Hair loss as it is, is caused by androgenic alopecia, and androgenic alopecia is a genetic trait, and thus it is a chronic problem and will continue to be so since medical technology hasn't yet advanced to the point where we can delete the androgenic alopecia genes. Therefore, anyone who begins a pharmaceutical intervention program has to be prepared for a long-term commitment. Any benefit you get from finasteride minoxidil will only last as long as you continue to use the drugs. This isn't controversial. Any doctor will tell you this, and most people know that once you begin the fight, you have to be in it for the long haul if you want to keep your gains. However, there is a fairly common belief in the hair loss community that beginning a hair loss treatment will make your hairs addicted to that treatment, and if you stop the treatment, not only will you lose your progress, but things will actually be worse than if you had never started treatment. This is sometimes referred to as catch-up hair loss, even though this is not a medical term, and I'm not sure where it even originated. It could just be something someone made up on the hair loss forums one day, but the idea behind it is just as the name implies. If you stop one or all hair loss treatments, you'll lose the benefits and then the hair you would have lost had you not begun treatment will catch up rapidly and you will therefore lose hair at a rapidly accelerated pace. In fact, people are afraid to stop their treatment because they believe that they will end up with even more hair loss than if they had never begun treatment in the first place. This is a particularly common belief about minoxidil, so much so that people are afraid to add minoxidil to their routine since if they have to stop it for some reason, they think they'll lose their gains and then some. There's also the belief that since minoxidil and finasteride have a different mechanism behind how they work, any new hair growth you get from minoxidil will be dependent on minoxidil, thus making this new hair addicted to minoxidil, and even using a more efficacious treatment in its place like finasteride will not stop you from losing the ground you gain from minoxidil since finasteride works differently from minoxidil. Oftentimes, you'll hear people say things like, Oh, don't start minoxidil unless it is absolutely necessary. Because once you start, you can never stop because your hair follicles are addicted to it now. To be fair, this is something I used to believe myself. And even though there is some truth to it, it isn't as simple as people make it out to be. So, what is the truth behind hair addiction to pharmaceuticals like minoxidil? Is it a real thing? And what actually happens if you do stop minoxidil or finasteride? Well, Chooms, we've got some scientific data that I'm about to break down to help you better understand this. So let's go ahead and take our trademark balls deep approach and figure out whether or not this hair loss addiction phenomenon is real or if it is just a bunch of broccoli. So what we are particularly interested in here is finding studies where people receive minoxidil or finasteride and then stop treatment to see what would happen to their hair. Well, that would be a tough study to volunteer for, but a few studies like that actually have been done. One of them is this study from 1999 titled, quote, Changes in Hair Weight and Hair count in men with androgenetic alopecia after application of 5% and 2% topical minoxidil, placebo, or no treatment, unquote. This study enrolled 33 men with Norwood scales 3 or 4 of androgenic alopecia and who were aged between 18 and 40 years. The men who were divided into four groups. One group got twice daily 5% minoxidil, one group got 2% minoxidil, one group got placebo, and one group was just completely untreated. So, there were two minoxidil treatment groups and two control groups, one that got a placebo and one that was untreated altogether. The subjects in the treatment groups and placebo group did not know what treatments they were getting and neither did the investigators. This is what is called a double blind study, which is the gold standard when it comes to study design. The investigators used a fairly unique method of assessing hair growth. They didn't use a trichogram or any kind of hair counting. Instead, every six weeks they clipped from the same small area of thinning scalp and actually weighed the hairs that they clipped. The investigators felt that this was a more efficient and probably more accurate measurement of hair growth or hair loss because with androgenic alopecia, you not only lose hair, but the hairs become miniaturized, meaning they get thinner and smaller and therefore lighter weight. Anyways, this is the method they used to evaluate the effects of minoxidil versus the control groups, and even though it isn't a common method of assessment, in theory, it sounds like it would be pretty accurate. So, the subjects in this study continued treatment for 96 weeks, so almost two years, but then all treatment 
treatment was then stopped. However, the investigators continued to assess their hair growth for another 24 weeks after stopping treatment, which is what makes this study so particularly interesting. So, the results are summarized in this figure here. In this graph, the x-axis, meaning the axis on the bottom, represents time in weeks, and the y vertical axis is percent change in hair weight from baseline, which is the zero in the middle of the axis. Notice also there is a vertical line at 96 weeks, which is when the treatments were stopped. The bottom two curves on the graph are the placebo and untreated groups. As expected, there is a steady loss of hair over time in those two curves because the androgenic alopecia process is continuing unchecked. Remember, these subjects are on no treatment at all. Although you'll notice, interestingly enough, that the placebo group did slightly better at the beginning, so this does suggest there was a slight placebo effect the group benefited from, but that effect was only acute and quickly went away. The top two curves represent 5% minoxidil, which is the black circles, and 2% minoxidil, which is the white circles. As expected, 5% minoxidil results in more hair growth than 2% minoxidil, but both are certainly better than no treatment. But after the initial big effect at the start of treatment, these curves also track slightly slightly downward, pretty much parallel with the control groups, which to me indicates that the androgenic alopecia process is still going on, but somewhat masked by the minoxidil, which is a nonspecific growth stimulant. In other words, minoxidil is not doing anything to fix the underlying excessive trash hormone DHT in these hair follicles. What's really interesting is what happens when the treatment is stopped at week 96. The control groups continue to get worse, but as you would expect, the minoxidil groups lose their gains, but they don't go back Back to the zero baseline, they actually go down to where the control groups are. So if you stop minoxidil, you end up where you would have been if you had never started minoxidil. I think that's what you'd expect because you're not treating the underlying process that's causing androgenic alopecia. On the other hand, you don't end up worse than if you had never started minoxidil, so your hair is not addicted to minoxidil. You just need to keep taking minoxidil to continue to enjoy its benefits. So I don't see these results as a reason not to use minoxidil because if you don't use it, you'll end up the same as if you did use it and have to stop it. If you don't have to stop it, you you definitely are better off than if you never used it. So for whatever reason you're unsatisfied with your results on finasteride, then there is no harm in at least trying minoxidil. Worst case scenario, you'll have to stop it and things will just revert to back to how they were while you were just on finasteride alone. And speaking of finasteride, what happens if you have to stop it? Does the same thing happen as what happens when you stop minoxidil? Well, this is addressed in a study published in 1998 titled, quote, Finasteride in the Treatment of Men with Androgenetic Alopecia, unquote. In this study, 1,000 1,553 men with androgenic alopecia with Norwood grades ranging from 2 to 5 received either finasteride 1 mg per day or they got a placebo. This study used a more traditional endpoint, namely hair counts on trichograms, to assess the efficacy. The interesting part of this study was that after 12 months of treatment, the treatments were reversed in half the men. In other words, half of the men on finasteride were switched to placebo and half of the men on placebo were switched to finasteride. So what happened? Well. Take a look at this figure here. Like the previous graph, the horizontal axis is time, and the vertical axis is the change in hair counts. Look at the curve with the filled in black circles. This was the group that stayed on placebo the whole 24 months of the study, and as you'd expect, their hair counts just kept getting worse and worse, as they were on nothing to stop the destructive effects of DHT. Now look at the curve with the black triangles. These men stayed on finasteride the whole 24 months of the study, and obviously they had improvement in their hair hair counts for the first year and maintain this growth after two years of treatment. One other unrelated point worth noting here, though, is the amount of time it took for subjects to get the full benefits of finasteride. It took a year as hair counts improved from one year versus six months. So this is something to take note of if you've been on finasteride for less than a year and are unsatisfied with the results still. In short, give it more time. Now, look at the curve with the white circles. These subjects got placebo for one year, one year with decreasing hair counts up until month 12, when they were then switched to finasteride one milligram daily. By month 24, they had improvement in their hair counts, though not as much as the men who had started finasteride the year before, which further goes to show how important it is to start drug treatment as soon as possible. Finally, the group we are most interested in is represented by the white triangles. They started out on finasteride 1 mg per day for the first 12 months. Then they switched to placebo. By 24 months, they had lost their gains, but unlike what we saw with minoxidil, they don't fall down to the level of the placebo group. Instead, they end up 
just a little below where they started. In other words, finasteride, unlike minoxidil, puts the whole destructive androgenic alopecia process on hold, kind of like it's in suspended animation. And that makes sense because unlike minoxidil, finasteride is actually treating the underlying process and so works better at preserving your hair compared to minoxidil. We know from numerous studies that finasteride is more effective against androgenic alopecia than minoxidil. For example, in this study from 2004, 65 men with androgenic alopecia were treated with either 5% minoxidil twice daily or finasteride 1 milligram daily. There was clearly better hair growth seen with finasteride alone than with minoxidil alone. It's also clear that the combination of finasteride plus minoxidil is even more powerful than either drug alone. In this figure from a study published in 2002, which I'll link below, the bottom curve is 2% minoxidil alone, and the middle two curves are finasteride 1 mg per day with and without ketoconazole shampoo, and the top curves is finasteride plus 2% minoxidil. So it appears minoxidil does have an additive effect to finasteride, and this is just 2% minoxidil, keep in mind, so there's probably more of a synergistic benefit when you using 5% minoxidil with finasteride. Also interesting here is the fact that ketoconazole shampoo, like Nizoril, didn't seem to have any influence on finasteride's effects after 12 months of usage, which further brings doubts on ketoconazole's role as an effective hair loss treatment. But that is another subject, and I'll link a video below where I talk about that if you're interested. So topical minoxidil is obviously a very safe and well-tolerated drug, but what if you're one of the rare people who get side effects? Well, your first step should be to switch to 2% minoxidil, because even though it is less efficacious than 5%, it is still definitely a clinically proven treatment that is better than using nothing. You can also try lowering the quantity of the solution you're using by only applying it to the problem areas. But let's say you've exhausted all of your options and you have to outright stop topical minoxidil. Are you doomed to lose all of your ground? Well, clearly, if you have to stop minoxidil and you are for some reason not on finasteride, the simple solution is for you to just go on finasteride and it's likely finasteride being that it is more powerful than minoxidil will more than make up for any lost ground from stopping minoxidil. The two drugs do work differently, but ultimately finasteride has better outcomes because it goes after the underlying cause of androgenic alopecia, and thus any ground you lose will be relatively minor, and in the long run, you may have better outcomes since finasteride is a more powerful treatment than minoxidil. If you are already on both finasteride and minoxidil and you stop minoxidil, there is no doubt you will lose some ground unless you are a non-responder to minoxidil. Minoxidil. But finasteride does most of the heavy lifting in treating androgenic alopecia, so you shouldn't lose too much ground. If you want to mitigate some of the lost ground, you can always consider switching to a more powerful 5-AR inhibitor like dutasteride if you need to, and in extreme cases you can even titrate dutasteride up to 2.5 milligrams daily, and I made a video about that if you want to learn more about the dose of dutasteride that is right for you. Additionally, for further protection, you can try a weaker adjunct treatment like stamoxidine, alphadradiol, or fluoridol. Even though these compounds do help a little bit, they are pretty expensive, so if possible, I would still try to only use a 5-AR inhibitor like finasteride or dutasteride, which will likely be potent enough even without minoxidil or anything else for that matter. So, the bottom line here is that there is no need for you to fear that your hair will get addicted to minoxidil or finasteride. That's not how these drugs work, but you should also realize that minoxidil is more like a general growth stimulant rather than a specific treatment for androgenic alopecia. Minoxidil doesn't treat the underlying process where DHT is continuing to destroy your hair. Finasteride, on the other hand, puts a halt to that process, so of the two drugs, finasteride is more important, and in most cases, finasteride can be used by itself to stop hair loss in the vast majority of people. The two drugs used together, however, are more powerful, and since topical minoxidil side effects are not serious, you should try to stay on minoxidil once you have started it, but you shouldn't be afraid to start minoxidil because of an unfounded fear that your hair will get addicted to it. Like I said, that's not how these drugs work. If anything, you should try to rely on finasteride by itself because it is a more convenient treatment, being that it's just a simple pill you take rather than a messy topical solution. However, if finasteride's results by themselves are not satisfactory for you, you shouldn't hesitate to add minoxidil because the worst case scenario is you stop it and your hair will go back to how it was if you had just stayed on finasteride by itself. Alright, so it is time for me to return to Care Morin, but I'll see you all again soon. So until then, take care of my fellow hair loss witchers. Goodbye and God bless.